Today we're going to talk about hemoglobin, and hemoglobin is a very important protein which is found inside the red blood cells. This is what gives the red blood cells their red color, and is very important for the process of binding the oxygen. So the oxygen binds to the hemoglobin, and it goes to the cells which need the oxygen, and then it exchanges it with the carbon dioxide, goes to the lungs, the carbon dioxide is exhaled and then the red blood cells will bind the oxygen once again on the hemoglobin and then it will go to the cells and so on. The cycle goes like this. So hemoglobin is a very important protein inside our bodies. And hemoglobin is a tetrameric protein. So it's tetra and this means that it has four subunits so for example we have different types of hemoglobin we have HbA and HbA2 these are called adult hemoglobins and for example HbA has two alpha subunits and two beta subunits for fetal hemoglobin for example which is found in a fetus it has two alpha subunits and two gamma subunits for embryonic hemoglobin which is found in an embryo we have two alpha subunits and two epsilon subunits for the fetal and embryonic hemoglobin types the binding of oxygen is much faster and so they have a higher affinity for oxygen so they bind oxygen much faster than the adult hemoglobin so this is something that we need to know now we're going to talk about adult hemoglobin so the part of hemoglobin which binds the oxygen is called a heme group and this group contains an ion, a ferrous ion, which is uh, bound to the nitrogen atoms in a certain manner, like this. So this is the, the shape of the heme group. It, uh, if you forget how to draw it, it looks like the uh, D-pad of the uh, PlayStation controller, the buttons of the D-pad of the PlayStation controller. Uh, this is how the heme group looks like. And here we have uh, nitrogens like this, and all of them are bound to an Fe2+. Plus. This is called a ferrous ion. So here we have different attachments on the sides of these um, bentos rings. We have a methyl group here and here, and here, and here. And a methyl group is a, so M equals CH3. And here we have a vinyl group and a vinyl group there. So V is a CH double bond CH2. This is a vinyl group and here and there we have a propionyl group so P equals propionyl group and this is a CH2 CH2 and then a COOH so this is the structure of the heme group so here 
bound to the iron, we have to know that the iron is found above the plane. So, if this is the heme group, the iron will be above the plane, like that. This position is called a tension position. And this is when the heme group uh, doesn't bind any oxygen. It's free of oxygens. This structure is found in the subunit of the hemoglobin. So let's say the subunit looks like that and the heme group is around here. The heme group is attached this is the point of attachment which is the iron on these two sides we have a histidine here and a histidine there so this one is distal and this one is proximal this one is nearer to the iron and this one is farther from the iron the oxygen will bind on that side on the distal side and each heme group is able to bind four oxygen molecules, four of them. So the oxygen will start to bind one by another and this binding will release the tension and the iron or the ferrous will begin to reach to the level of the plane after the state of tension it will begin to reach the level of the plane so this state is called a relaxed state and the ferrous will be oxidized into Fe3 plus so ferrous to ferric and this oxidation process will release some hydrogens from the heme group so we conclude from that that hemoglobin has an acidic character because it releases hydrogens so this is why hemoglobin is considered acidic so when the hemoglobin or the heme group has the iron in this state it will not be able to bind oxygen anymore so the oxygen has to be released from the red blood cells and this happens when the um, red blood cells reach the regions or the cells which contain the carbon dioxide and the carbon dioxide is a result from the metabolic process so there is a compound called 2,3-DPG 2,3-diphosphoglyceride and this uh, compound is the result from the glucose metabolism so when the red blood cell reaches a cell that already carried out a metabolic process we will find this compound plus carbon dioxide so this compound will uh, increase the affinity of the heme group to bind the oxygen in the lungs because of the metabolic process so the body will need more oxygen and at the same time, the um, heme groups that already carried the um, oxygen, it will give it to the cell and receive the carbon dioxide. So the heme group, which was oxidized, will be deoxygenated because it will lose the oxygen and then it will carry out the carbon dioxide and go to the lungs release the carbon dioxide and receive oxygen once more so when it releases the carbon dioxide it will not be able to bind the oxygen directly because iron will be in that state and it needs this 2,3-DPG in order to return the iron once more to the ferrous state so it will return to the state of tension so that it will be able to bind oxygen once more and this is the process of uh, oxidation, deoxidation, and uh, carrying the carbon dioxide that the heme carries out. Finally, 
we need to talk about something called the oxygenation curve. So this is the amount of oxygenated hemoglobin and this will be the pressure of oxygen. And this curve is sigmoidal. So it has an S shape. So here on halfway of the scale we have half of the amount of oxygenated hemoglobin and here is the hundred percent. So the pressure of oxygen at that point equals 26 milli meter mercury. So we deduce from that if the pressure of oxygen in the blood is 26 millimeter mercury this means that half of the hemoglobin should be oxygenated so if this ratio is not as it is like that this means that there is a problem in the heme group function so for example if the pressure is like this and the ratio of the hemoglobin uh, which is oxygenated is lower this means that the binding affinity of hemoglobin is low. There's a problem in the uh, binding affinity. On the other hand, if the pressure is still the same, but the amount of oxygenated hemoglobin is higher, this means that hemoglobin has a very, very high affinity to oxygen regarding this low pressure and the high uh, ratio of oxygenated hemoglobin. But this is the normal ratio. So halfway is 26 millimeter mercury. This is the pressure of oxygen and this is the amount of oxygenated hemoglobin. So that was the physiological or the normal hemoglobin. Next time we're gonna talk about pathological hemoglobin and uh, cytochromes and myoglobin. So until then I thank you for watching and see you.